The Lenovo IdeaPad S340 is a cheaper laptop that can often be picked up for under $500. So let's find out just what we're getting for the price in this detailed review and help you decide if it's a laptop you should consider. For the specs, I've got an Intel i5-8265U CPU, 8GB of dual channel memory, a 256GB NVMe M.2 SSD, and a 15.6 inch 1080p 60Hz TN panel. For network connectivity, it's got 802.11ac Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5, but it's too thin for a gigabit Ethernet port, so you'll need to use an adapter if you need that. There's no discrete graphics in my model, but newer versions are available with MX250 graphics and with newer 10th gen CPUs. You can find examples of other configurations and updated prices linked in the description. The top is all just a plain silver plastic with a subtle Lenovo logo on the edge, and the interior is a similar colour too. Overall, the plastic chassis did have some flex to it, but it felt solid enough, and all corners and edges were smooth. The weight is listed at 1.79 kilos on their website, and mine was quite close to this. With a small 65 watt power brick and cable for charging, the total weight rises to just 2 kilos, so it's fairly lightweight and portable. It's less than 1.8 centimeters thick, and the width and depth are very similar to other modern slim 15 inch laptops, giving it 7 millimeter thin bezels on the sides. Despite the smaller bezels, the 720p camera is found in the ideal spot above the display in the middle, and it's also got a physical privacy shutter you can slide across. This is what the camera and microphone look and sound like on the S340. I'd say both are a little below average. The keyboard in my unit has no backlighting, however their website notes that it's available in select models, so seems like that will vary. Overall I had no problems typing with it. Here's how it sounds to give you an idea of what to expect. The plastic keyboard deck was fairly flexible when intentionally pushing down hard. However, I never had any problems with the build quality during normal use. There was an average amount of screen flex, however it was reduced by the large hinge that runs along most of the screen. The precision touchpad worked alright, it's got the usual gestures and the size seemed okay. As for the screen, the S340 is available with three different options. You can get it with a 1080p IPS option, however mine had the lowest 1366 by 768 resolution and it's a TN panel too. I've measured the colour gamut with the Spider 5 and got 57% of sRGB, 41% of NTSC and 42% of Adobe RGB. At 100% brightness, I measured 232 nits in the centre with a 90 to 1 contrast ratio. So very low results compared to the machines I typically test, but the 1080p options should do better. As I've got a TN panel, the viewing angles were quite bad. There's colour shift when not looking at it front on, but to be fair, you'll probably be looking front on when using it anyway. Oh, and the screen goes all the way back. TN panels are harder to get bleed photos due to the limited viewing angles. Anyway, despite the differences here, there wasn't any bleed in my unit that I could see with my own eyes. On the left from the back there's the power input, HDMI output, USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-C port, no Thunderbolt though, and 3.5mm audio combo jack. The HDMI version wasn't listed, however after connecting a 4K monitor it only ran at 30Hz. So it's version 1.3 or 1.4, rather than 2.0 or newer. On the right from the front there's status LEDs, full size SD card slot, and two USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A ports. Otherwise there's nothing at all over on the back or front of the machine. Due to the all silver finish, it doesn't really show up fingerprints. Underneath just had some air ventilation towards the back, and the rubber feet did an okay job of preventing movement when in use. To get inside we need to take out 10 TR5 screws, and one of the front screws doesn't fully remove from the bottom panel. The speakers are found towards the front left and right corners. They sounded pretty average, a bit tinny at higher volumes without any bass. However, they still got loud enough at maximum volume, and the latency mon results weren't too bad. Inside, we've got the battery down the bottom left, 2.5 inch drive slot towards the right, single memory slot in the center, single NVMe PCIe M.2 slot to the right of that, and Wi-Fi card right up the top right corner. There's a fair bit of empty space inside, and they do sell the S340 in a smaller 14 inch version too, so I guess it's just been stretched out for that larger 15 inch panel in this model. Although there's only one single memory slot, the laptop comes with 4 gigs soldered to the board, so mine runs in dual channel with the 4 gig stick. I'll also mention that although the stick is DDR4-2666 capable, 
The i5-8265U CPU only supports DDR4-2400, which is what it ran at. The S340 is powered by a 3-cell 52.5Wh battery. Despite not being all that large, it lasted for over 14 hours just watching YouTube videos with the screen on 50% brightness. And this is thanks to the lower powered specs. By default, the S340 came with Windows 10 S, which basically prevents you installing untrusted apps outside of the Windows Store. However, you can easily disable this for the full version of Windows, so no problem there. The Lenovo Vantage software allows you to manage the system. For some reason, it doesn't give you the option to swap between the performance modes. However, you can use the function in QKey to swap between silent and performance modes. Thermal testing was completed with an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. As there is no discrete graphics, I've only tested with a CPU-only stress test. And worst case in performance mode, the CPU is hitting 77 degrees. These are the clock speeds for the same tests. The i5-8265U CPU has a maximum all-core turbo boost speed of 3.7 GHz on all four cores. However, even in performance mode, with a 0.1 volt undervolt applied, we're a little off this. This was simply due to the default power limits. In quiet mode, a 15 watt PL1 is defined, with 18 watts being the limit in performance mode. So these limits will prevent it getting too hot at the expense of some power. Here's what the CPU performance was looking like in Cinebench. So we can get a nice boost to performance with performance mode, and then some extra in the multi-core result with the extra undervolting. As for the areas where you actually touch, at idle it was pretty average, around the typical 30 degree point I often see. With the CPU only stress test in performance, the middle of the keyboard approaches 40 degrees. With the back exhaust below the screen hitting the mid 40s, it only just barely felt warm to the touch. Here's what the fan noise sounded like while running these tests. At idle, it was completely silent. With the CPU stress test running in quiet mode, it was still on the quieter side. And then with performance mode, it wasn't that much louder at all. All things considered, there were no issues with thermal performance at all. CPU temperatures didn't get too hot, the keyboard area was only a little warm to the touch, and the fans remained on the quieter side. Although there aren't any discrete graphics in my model, I have seen newer versions available with an MX250. Despite this, as my screen has a 1366 by 768 resolution, I've still attempted to play some lightweight esports titles to see how it goes. Dota 2 was tested playing in the middle lane, and it was playing very smoothly with low settings. At medium settings, it looked significantly better, but was noticeably slower, likely due to that lower 1% low performance. And ultra settings was a little laggy, but not too bad. Overwatch was tested in the practice range. I've used a 50% render scale at this resolution to get fair results. However, the image was quite blurry and not ideal. With a 100% render scale, it did look much better, but I was also seeing 30 FPS with low settings. CSGO was tested with the Uletical FPS benchmark tool, and again the results weren't great, but should at least be somewhat playable at this resolution with minimum settings. In the end, you can still play less demanding esports titles at lower settings on the Intel graphics, it's just not a very good experience. I've used Crystal Diskmark to test the 256GB NVMe M.2 SSD, and the speeds were actually pretty decent. Results will vary with different drives but they only seem to sell them with PCIe NVMe drives, so at least boot and program load times should be fast. The SD card slot was also working well enough too. Nothing amazing, but better than many others. For updated pricing, check the links in the description, as prices will change over time. At the time of recording, you can pick this config of the Lenovo S340 for $460. US Granted, it is on sale. The Lenovo website has a few different configurations available, though the config I've got is closer to $700 here, so you'll definitely want to look out for a deal. Here in Australia, we're looking at around $1,000 Australian dollars, which with taxes removed is about $600 US dollars. Let's conclude by going through the good and bad aspects of the Lenovo IdeaPad S340 laptop. The positives of this machine are that it's using a fairly good PCIe NVMe SSD, so you'll get fast boot times and quick program loading. It doesn't get too hot even when under full CPU load, and the fans run quiet. Despite the battery not being too large, due to the specs it's paired with, it can last a long time. It's got a full-size SD card slot. It's on the thinner side with OK specs that should be decent for office or schoolwork, all while available for under 500 US dollars. The main downside for me was the TN screen. 
It's not even full HD. The viewing angles were bad, and the contrast was terrible, making it look very washed out. To be fair though, it's available with three different screen options, so you could get a brighter 1080p IPS panel which should resolve the viewing angle issue, and would likely also have better contrast. There was some flex to the plastic chassis, it wasn't too bad or really that noticeable when using it normally, but yeah, it is a plastic laptop. There's 4GB of memory soldered to the motherboard, so you can at least run dual channel, but it does limit upgrade options in the future to a single memory stick. There was no discrete graphics in my unit, so only basic graphical work will be possible with the Intel graphics. Although you can play basic esports titles at low settings and low resolutions, it's not a great experience, and I definitely wouldn't suggest buying with light gaming in mind. If gaming is a priority, then you'd probably be better served by spending an extra $100 or so for something with Nvidia graphics, or otherwise check the secondhand market. Overall, it's not that bad of a machine for the price. If you're just doing office or schoolwork, I think it could be a good option when on sale for under $500 US dollars. Let me know what you thought about the Lenovo S340 laptop down in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider getting subscribed for future laptop reviews and tech videos like this one.